Future Scientists, my name is Kaylee and I'm back again today with another edition of our Future Scientist Storytime. Today we are going to be reading One Day a Dot by Ian Lendler. I hope you guys enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started. One day, a dot appeared. And it was so excited to be there that it burst. This made beautiful new dots that were so attractive that they joined together. And then there was light. The light made even more dots in colors never seen before. And these dots got together as well and formed dots of every size. One of these new dots, the third one from the sun, was a very special shade of blue. The blue was because it was covered with water. And when the warm yellow light mixed with the blue water, it made something new, something alive. The green dot was lonely, so it started a family. And this family started a game called Catch the Light. The rules were simple. If you caught enough light, you stayed alive. But being a dot wasn't always enough to help you win. So the dots did something new. They made shapes. Then one day, one of those shapes couldn't catch enough light to feed itself. So it ate another shape. And it got bigger and stronger, so it ate more. That changed the game. Instead of catch the light, the game was now called eat or be eaten. To survive this new game, new shapes were required. And after a while, everything was swimming and biting and doing whatever it needed to stay alive. Then one day, to escape the game, one of those creatures climbed out of the water. And since it was alone on the land, it was safe. So that fish had kids and those kids had kids. And after a while, these new land fish got bigger, much bigger, but some got smaller. Some flew in the sky and some dug in the ground. Some had scales and some had feathers. One even grew something new called fur, but she was so small that nobody noticed her in her home underground. They were all too busy doing whatever they needed to stay alive. Then one day, a dot fell out of the sky, a big dot. When the big dot hit the blue dot, the explosion turned the whole sky red. The world was on fire and all the land fish burned, but one thing survived. Remember that little fur thing? Her home underground kept her alive, so she started a family. Her children spread all over that blue dot, and as they spread, they got bigger and grew into new shapes. Some grew teeth, and some grew claws, some ran fast, and some climbed trees. But one day, a fur thing appeared that didn't have sharp teeth. It didn't have claws. It didn't even have a lot of warm fur. It had something new, a big brain. So to stay alive, it used its big brain to make things. It made its own claws. It made its own fur. These creatures were so smart that they made pictures to teach their children what to do. That made their children even smarter. Much smarter. After a while, these creatures could make big things and little things and flying things and digging things. Whatever they needed to stay alive. And just like the black dot and the green dot and the land fish and the fur things before them, these creatures made more of themselves. They had families. They had you. These amazing creatures could make anything and learn everything. But despite all that, there was one question that they could not answer. Where did that first dot come from? Thank you all so much for tuning in. To all the kids out there, let us know what your favorite part of the story was. And to all the parents and adult family members, stay tuned to our social media channels for more virtual science and future scientist story times. Please stay smart and safe, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye! Hey everybody, Christian here. I want to just thank you for watching our content. If you enjoyed, please make sure you hit that like button down below. Also, as you guys know, we are going through some very tough times and our hearts at the Science Center goes out to everyone that's been affected by this coronavirus outbreak. 
And as most of you also know, we are a nonprofit organization. We rely very heavily on live programs as well as admissions in order to keep the Science Center lights on. So because we're not open, we do need your help. If you enjoyed our content, please consider hitting that donate button down below and giving anything you can. One dollar, five dollars, any amount will help us continue our mission to open every mind to science.